Hello, everyone. I'm Virginia Barran Carrillo from City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center. I'm sitting right here with Dr. Alyssa Flemeck from Fox Chase Cancer Center. So, Dr. Flemeck, can you share with us how about you approaching your patients with who have a um, localized high risk disease once they have their nephrectomy? Absolutely. So, for localized high risk patients, adjuvant pembrolizumab is a standard of care. There were three other trials that were negative, but this trial was positive, and so we offer it to all patients who qualify based on pathology. We also have an exciting clinical trial of adjuvant pembrolizumab with the V940 vaccine. Um, that's also been uh, easy to enroll to, and um, patients are eager to get on that. Great. And for these patients who relapse after adjuvant treatment with pembrolizumab, how, how are you approaching the treatment with them? So I treat them as a de novo first-line patient. I don't think we know any better to either say immunotherapy hasn't worked for them and stop it. Um, so I just use the standard doublet therapies that I would for anyone else. And in this context, how are you integrating the use of cytoreductive nephrectomy with patients once they're diagnosed with metastatic disease in the de novo setting? Yeah, great question. Ever since the Carmina trial, we almost never do cytoreductive nephrectomy unless it's palliative. We start with our very effective immunotherapies first, see how much of a response we can get, and then bring the question back to our surgeons later to see if the kidney should be removed at that juncture. Okay. And moving forward to first-line systemic therapy, we fortunately have many options right now available. There's this whole debate about IO, IO versus IO, TKI. What are the factors you take into account to select one regimen against the other? Yeah, absolutely. We're so fortunate to have multiple regimens. I like to think about sequence. So I like to use Len Pembro if I need a quick response. Pembro exit and uh, if I feel like there's a little bit of room to move, I think the TKIO combos get the more, better short-term outcomes. And at least in so far, we, as far as we can see, the same long-term outcomes. Now, the longitudinal data really exists with Ibinivo, and so certainly people are committed to that um, based on the nine-year, 10-year follow-up. Great. And just to close up, how are you approaching once the patients, you know, progress after an initial first-line therapy with an IO-based combo? What's your usual sequence? How do you approach this? this? Right. So I like to not use Cabonivo first line so that I have Cabozantinib as second line. It's a great, really effective second line agent. We're doing a study looking at dosing, trying to get that quite right for those patients. Um, Len-Ev is active. And Belzutifan is actually a nice break from TKI toxicity. In the right patients, it can be very effective. And the toxicity, uh, anemia, and hypoxia are really not that hard to manage once you have a little bit of experience with it. Great. And any final thoughts regarding the use of immunotherapy rechallenge in patients who have already progressed on an anti-PD-1-based regimen? Yeah, it's tempting, right? Because those immunotherapy responses are so nice, and we always hope for those durable responses. So I wouldn't fault anyone for trying it, but I think we're getting ready to admit that the totality of the data really don't show, you know, sort of in any statistical way more benefit once the patient's progressed on immunotherapy. <laughs>